that time I was on my own I'll say that at the time that I noticed that he was about nine months to a year I found myself on my own and as a single parent at that time so so that would be another subject that yes we'll be that would be about. another subject yeah. so yeah so Boom. So I did an interview with a mom who spoke about her son's diagnosis of autism. Interestingly, after the interview, I had other people reach out to me to suggest that, um, yeah, they would want to know further or they would want to know more about the diagnosis of autism. And interestingly, I had a mom who contacted me to say, Nana, thanks very much for all that information. And I would want to share my experience looking after my own child with autism. So guess what? I am actually going to see the said mom to get to hear her story and also for us to be able to understand the impact that autism or diagnosis does have on, you know, the family, relationships, as well as, yeah, on the individual caring for a child with autism or additional needs, especially as a migrant or immigrant. Um, yeah. The only person who can tell it right is the person who is experiencing it. Yeah, today, lo and behold, uh, yeah, we've managed to get uh, Josephine. Josephine is a mom. Um, one of the things I really know about you, you've got some kind of crazy faith. You know, you've got some kind of crazy happiness. What keeps you going as a mom having a child with special needs? Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> Um, to um, share my story and I'm hoping that this is also going to encourage other parents, mothers, carers of um, children with special needs. Um, what keeps me going, um, one, is my faith. Um, I am a Christian and growing up I've always attended church, Sunday school, I'm not so much into going to church and pray, you know those charismatic prayer but I have that belief that God said he is God so I know that whatever situation I find myself in he is going to um, come through and prove that he is God and I haven't read it myself in the Bible but my dad um, also a Christian brought, a, a, brought us up in a Christian way always used to say to us in the Bible it says do not worry 365 times so 365 times is each day so we shouldn't worry so although I go through challenges personal challenges everything with my son at the end of the day I say to myself do not worry and the next thing is having a child with special needs my child has um, is autistic He's got autism, ADHD, and learning difficulties. Um, the first thing, as any parent, um, you wouldn't want to, I'll say that no parent wants to have a child and um, eventually be told that there is, I don't call it an issue, but they are different from the neurotypical um, children or whatever it's called but saying that you have to accept that is the first thing accept what you've been given be grateful be happy and once you get to that point you get through that acceptance and say that okay this is it this is what it is you'll be able to run with it it's like any other problem. If you don't um, identify the problem, you'll not be able to find a solution. If you keep denying the problem or the issue, you would not be able to investigate and find a solution for it. So for me, the first time um, when he was little, I was like, seeing like he's a very intelligent boy, very clever. At the age of about seven months, he was... Um, he would be able he was able to say the alphabet although it wasn't really clear but you could really it's audible enough for you to know what he was saying by the age of nine and um, nine months it was clearer he would say his alphabets numbers and then when he turned one it was remarkable he was spelling um 
and he is so smart that he was able to like he would improvise he's so clever if he can he's arranging his alphabets and then he couldn't um what do you call it he couldn't find a letter you find an item around the house that looks like that letter at the age of one so i realized that there is something there but why is he not interacting with other children why is not he not interacting with me but he had words as time went on slowly he was losing the words and then i felt no one told me to go to the gp but i just felt there is something i never know anything i didn't even know anything about autism i never heard that word so i went to the gp i said hmm. um at that time um I was I eventually well I was on my own I'll say that at the time that I noticed that he was about nine months to a year I found myself on my own and as a single parent at that time so so that will be another subject that yes we'll be that will be about. another subject yeah. so yeah so by the time he turned one I found myself on my own being a single parent so I went to the GP I said to him there's something that is not right um, I think um, when I go to uh, what's it called? They used to have um, forgotten what it's called. You take them to is it um, play group? Mm -hmm. I could see the other children, um, his age, the mothers, the way they're engaging, but he wasn't. So I just felt let me go and speak to the GP and ask why this is. And then the first the first time I took him to the GP, the GP said, "Oh, there's nothing wrong with him." He will grow out of it but as a mom i was a bit concerned obviously everyone feels that way you start comparing looking at other children and uh, but there is this thing about me i am not afraid to say that okay i have it i think there is a problem and i remember a friend said to me that why is it that am I, why am i trying to find something wrong with my child i said i am not but the thing is that it's better for me to go and ask and get an answer which will be either a yes or a no it doesn't change anything if it's nothing wrong with him hallelujah then it's fine but if there is something then we can move forward with whatever help or assistance that i need so in my head i wasn't telling anyone around me not my family eventually i just thought okay i'll keep going so i went i kept going and then eventually the GP said, okay, if you insist, I'm going to refer you. So that's where they did the referral. And then eventually they did all the tests and came to me that he had this diagnosis. First half, like, I sat down and thought, hmm, okay, this is it. Um, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, no one told me anything else. I didn't even go to research it. I didn't go to read okay autism i think well i don't know so we, we'll go he went to straight to no mainstream was doing his things then um i just felt we will accept it we'll take it i have a child i'm happy that is it that's the bottom line i didn't care what other people said about him where we went somewhere people staring at us or he's really boisterous as that early age he was I celebrated his intelligence how clever he was at that age so that kept me going you are um, at the stage you've cared for your son and he recently had his eighth birthday yes right I actually saw you actually show two pictures which really made meaning to me and that was you know me trying to make meaning of it so you showed one photo of him at your back yeah and baby. that is him being a little little baby but actually another photo of him being a grown-up you know young lad yeah. yeah but you did put some three indicators dot 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 for me i thought that meant the journey that yes. you had actually gone with this son of yours yes yeah tell yes. us about it how do you feel what's the journey been like yes um on his birthday, I was really happy. 
I felt the excitement. I just felt, oh goodness me, look how far we've come. It's been a really tough one. Um, really challenging. Um, saying, although I feel that I'm, I'm a very tough person, there has been times that I have cried. Cried not because of his diagnosis, cried because of the challenges that we face on a daily basis. It, it was so tough, sometimes he wouldn't sleep, um, I couldn't, I wasn't sleep. I had to eventually quit my job. Yes, because I used to work full time, things were going financially, we were okay, and the sky was my limit. But because of the challenges, the daily challenges that we faced, um, I had to quit my job. But in all, I still had so much to celebrate. So on that day, on his birthday, I just felt so happy. I'm, look, I'm looking at him, how big he is on my back. And then looking back at that and thinking about all the little, little things that have happened, um, the setbacks and everything. And here we are for, mm, he's a big boy now. If I have to go in detail, we wouldn't finish, but there's so much. You are in my home now. Probably it's not, it's, it looks okay. Um, that I will say like tidy, but if you know the damages that he's caused, there was a point I had to sit him down. I was weeping and I said to him, he didn't understand, but I said to him, this is all our savings that we're throwing away. But after saying that to him and like letting it all out, it was like, anyway, savings or no savings, we're going to continue this journey and then that's why I looked back and I thought forget about all the things that people say to you forget about all the judgments being passed but you know what you what has brought you to this day that's why I was so happy and I looked at those pictures some people pick nicer pictures and all that but I looked at that and I thought God has been good to us okay. yes so that's why I put those pictures and then I put dot 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 amen it's meaning that he hasn't finished with us he is going to do it. if I say he because I'm a Christian I believe that there is an almighty God and he is seeing us through it mm. and he's going to do it do you think you've become more stronger because you had to do it on your own um, I could say that that's a very tricky question I could say yes yeah I could say yes and doing it on your own it, um, I think it could be better if you have the right person in your life I, I feel that I I think I am better off on my own because of what I know and it's made me very resilient um, I haven't been on my own in a way saying that I've got the um, was it professionals involved in school other professionals involved trying to support me here and there but it didn't come just like that from the onset yes it didn't come like it's lately it's got better but initially it was tough probably the first four or five years it was really really hard let's be blunt how much do you think your son's diagnosis had a role to play in your own relationship for you to be in, on your own? It didn't play anything. Okay. So that one, um, um, as if you say relationship, as in my, uh, with my partner. With your partner, uh, yeah. He hasn't played anything. He had, there were other issues because when he left, he was only nine months okay so we didn't even know that there was a diagnosis. diagnosis but even when the diagnosis came in i've always been blamed for the first time i even tell <laughs> i don't want to even go and delve into that i was told oh it's your fault you were very firm strict you've all like i have always been uh, how sh i have standards so to him oh you've lowered your standards and now he's behaving thus he came to see us after three years that he left he came to see us 
and then when you saw him jumping around and everything oh it's your fault so you've been so lenient that's why he's got that you know what if it was any other person knowing what we've been going through i will flip i just did not do you think at some point people will take their diagnosis the actions of maybe your son mm -hmm. as a behavior by not understanding what exactly is going on and rather blame you on that yes tell me about it um sometimes in the supermarket someone will tell you of uh, mom can you ensure your son is not doing this like rudely you know what i'll just say sorry I don't have to I, usually I don't even explain to them all I say is sorry get him off whatever if I can yes if I can't I just let him be I just let him be I know as a sometimes as a parent as I as I said earlier you need to accept uh, initially I didn't know anything about autism but as time went on I've been on almost every training that has been offered to me from toileting, sleep, um, behavior, everything. I've been there. So now I know when he's having a meltdown, genuine meltdown from maybe when he's being silly. I am in his life. I would say apart from him going to school, I'm in, in his life all the time. I observe everything. It's, almost, it's a full-time thing. It's more than a full-time job. That's what people don't understand. So when I get all these accusations, I'm like, I don't need to explain myself to you. You've talked about a moment where he was actually, he actually had a meltdown and sat in the middle of the street. And you had to make that decision whether you had to record to show his case workers as to what exactly you were going through as compared to picking him up from the street. How do you manage or how did you, you manage that? I couldn't even, at that, um, I couldn't even record it. It was really hard. Um, I don't know, there is no words that can explain the magnitude of the challenges that you face when he's like that, when he refuses to move. He is so strong that I had to use my whole, how should I, um, body mass to restrain him before i got help now i have a bit of help where i get support workers coming because he's two to one he's okay but he's so unpredictable he can run off when he has a meltdown we probably need up to five people to support him when it's that extreme so um there was a, a time that i was with a friend i got a friend to record it whilst i tried and even with that we struggled the two of us struggled there were times where he's refused to move and I had to try and figure out how to get my phone to ring someone I don't drive people staring us at us in the middle of the road he's like crossroad traffic light he wants to be. he's just in the road cars are just whisking by so dangerous so I have to figure out how, so, um, how to probably use my phone call the person uh, somebody and say can you please come if I don't have anyone that was before I had the help it was so challenging I don't even know how um, I manage but sometimes strangers will come to my aid okay. yeah they could see then you see a stranger coming running and say mom are you okay I said can you please help me there are times where I have to sit in a car park with him uh, going to church we are all happy going to church he's happy we get there get out of uh, get up uh, yeah um, a light from the taxi he's happy and then bolt he's not bold because he's afraid to go in there he's just excited thinking he's playing and we'd have to have to chase him up if he refuses to move sits all dressed up sat on the floor it could be raining you have to sit there with him he doesn't understand that it's muddy it's dirty you have to sit in there with him but and then sometimes there's nothing that you can do on the floor on the floor there has been times where even with myself and so many times myself and um, the support worker we could not really move him so they had to stop the cars and um, police had to intervene where the police came stop the cars and ensure our safety just think he's only eight he's just turned eight this is way before he turned eight yeah but saying that um 
have the more it's it's you know what god gives you the strength and the, the main thing is that it's not sometimes it get easy i think i believe i am hoping it's going to get easier but then um probably this is one thing uh, i'm just varying off a bit that is i will use the word african parents sometimes do, with children's um how should i put it like children with special needs need to know when you accept that there's especially in this country there is help you may not have all the help that you need but there is enough it's up to you to um what's the word to you? it's up to you to know what to do with the help that you're getting. So with the training that I've been having and everything, I know that now his behavior, I watch him if he's, what triggers? I know his triggers. At first I didn't know that I have to observe his triggers. So I know his triggers. I know that when he starts behaving a certain way, if I don't intervene quickly and trying to de-escalate the situation, it's going to get to that state. Mm. So there are times that he's okay with noise. He's a very bubbly, friendly, go lucky boy. Everyone likes him. You see him and you like him. So, and then people have the notion that, oh, autism, they behave a certain way, they have to look a certain way. No, unless um, probably you are in his space for a, uh, some time, then you understand when you speak to him and he ignores you. And then you know that, oh, prob some people don't even know because other kids are shy and they would not respond back. So these are the only thing. But because I've been through all this training and I'm very hopeful that with the training and workshops that I've attended, it's helping. It's helping a bit on a daily basis. And I take a day at a time as mm. it comes. There are days that I'm going crazy. I am there are days that I'm like <sighs> That I even feel that I don't want to speak to nobody. I don't want to step out. But then you have to like shake that off and say that and, and keep going and keep moving. And as another thing is my appearance, my surroundings. I That helps me as well. Because when he's going through this and your surroundings and your own appearance, you're not looking after yourself, it makes it worse. So I have made it like... Um, I always make conscious efforts to make sure that I look after myself. I'm looking after myself with the help that I'm getting. I'm looking after my surroundings. I'm looking after him. And that it's holistic. For, that is how I put it. That holistic um, 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 thing that you do for yourself. That's help your mental state, your emotional state, being human. There are times that you feel at your lowest of your lowest. I Just think there like will that. be times that as human you need strength, you need help. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you're still young, you know, yeah. I'll still definitely class you as a young lady. Yeah. Do you think you may find it easy to get somebody to join you as a partner in a relationship? How easy is it if you have a child with additional need and thinking about, you know, having a new relationship i have I, it's, it's a it's it's a choice that at the moment i have not, i'm not being with anyone the reason being that you need the right person around you you need the right, right person around you even with family people who think your your loved ones can sometimes be like how should i put it even me as a mom you some, sometimes feel like you you are heading towards a breaking point how much more somebody else who who is not the biological father or whatever would bringing them into your life so i i have made a conscious choice not to be with anyone at the moment i'm so like not that i haven't met people i've met but i just observe them around him and i don't just bring them around um, him just like that conversations obviously now there is whatsapp your phone call i'm listening to how your your values and things the way you say things and i'm thinking this person cannot be around a child like this or they, they just they just think they know and um 
you need someone who has who should to deal with a child like that very patient you need patience mm. you need somebody who is empathetic who not sympathize with me but have empathy okay yeah i don't okay. want to be sympathized with no. what's the difference um if uh, i don't want to be somebody to feel sorry for me because there's nothing i don't see that there's something wrong with him i see that there is he's different so having empathy is understanding that this is what i'm going through this is it and uh, maybe if you have empathy you'd be able to probably um how should i put it I don't even know how to explain this, but just don't feel sorry for me and go, oh, no, no there is nothing wrong with him. Mm. I, this is how I see that there is nothing wrong with him. So if somebody is going to find say, oh, there's something wrong with him, he's different from other children and he's supposed to be this and look at, at him a different way, then I feel that you're not the right person. But if you see him as, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is how he is. This is that he's just different. Mm -hmm. And just like somebody having asthma and you don't see the person any different, you don't feel sorry for somebody or you don't sympathize with that person who has asthma. You accept, oh, he has asthma, so I have to do this to help. Okay, if I don't have to put this, you should, maybe they, you know, the trigger, so you help with that. This, that is how I see the whole thing. So being having partners, that has really um, um, impacted on that as well. So I just, I, I'm taking my time. And saying that, personally, I've always been very strong. Even before I had children, even be, and I said children, my son, I have only one son. You never know. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Even before I got married, I have I I am very strong minded. I wasn't I didn't feel like I have to marry. I was that kind of person. Yes, I respect the institution of marriage. I still respect that oh that sh you should have somebody with you. I still and I've never given up on finding someone or love. I've always been like that. But it doesn't define me as who you are or let people f look at me in a different way or you don't have a child and you do have a child and you should have a child or you should be married people will just say that to you don't you think you need somebody yes i do um, if i had somebody a second hand to support me yes it would um, be brilliant it would make things a lot better but saying that i can't just allow just anybody into our lives how do you think actually looking for help or maybe support in the community how do you think the community has been receptive or otherwise which makes you make that decision that you know what this is my um yeah this is my route to take as compared to relying on my community if you say community as in the african community the ghanaian community whichever the community that you've the come first from. one will be the christian community african community at first i was told that why do you want to um if those who understand tree I'll say this. Someone said to me, "I then I be so toy yare ma uba. O o bo o je. I say o je yare ma uba. I'm like on yare. O bi yare as ma wa je yare na ma ne ho. So like that's the entry, meaning that like why have I accepted an illness for my son? I, I we should pray about it. I've got. I've got I got sent so many prayer lines people calling me even telling me at one point in time someone came here and then they looked at him oh he's a lovely boy you know what he um, I should go to the market you know the open market where they sell food stuff and um, at the end of the, uh, the close of the day I should go and pick the food stuff the, on the floor on the uh, on the um, market floor and come and cook with it for him and it's going to cure that it's like thank you yes but then when i heard that i loved and then later on i watched there's a lady on social media nanaya my i think my journey is with autism yeah. i chanced on it and then i think then um her mom was telling her story 
and the things that she's gone through I just laughed I thought oh so that's why this lady is also telling me that but I am a very strong world person it's it's crazy mm. it's crazy it's like okay no I will fall I, I don't I use the word my some of my friends and family call me I don't care not in a negative way but I don't care People are brought up, you know, with faith in religion, you know, possibly being Christians, Muslim, and all that. And when things like that do happen, people would say, you know, why don't you pray about it? Why don't you go to the church? You know, I can see you shaking your head. Yeah. At what point in time did you have any interactions with the likes of maybe pastors, people praying for you and that? Never. Never. I believe that if, as a Christian, I may be wrong, but this is me. I believe that whatever is in me is bigger than whatever is in the world. That is what God has made me believe. So I strongly hold on to that. And I do revere pastors. I do revere like men of God. Um, but that does not mean that I should have to go to them otherwise God would not have, wouldn't have given us the opportunity to pray for ourselves or pray so I believe that I can pray and God will listen to me I don't need somebody else to pray for me they can pray with me and I'm happy with that but I'm I don't know if you understand our community they was like you have to go to this place you have to do that that's not me I am not I, I I'm not against it but it's not for me I've never been anywhere for somebody to pray or put anointing oil or even somebody bringing me the anointing oil communion if I take somebody brings me communion where I've had it you know those little tabs that I've had and I'm not convinced that I, I it's not I don't want you to put me under pressure if I feel like I want to do it I'll do it but if you are bringing it to me and say oh you have to do this like I still have some there I just put it somewhere because I am I need that conviction myself to be able to take that communion that I have to speak to God and the way I pray is different from what the conventional way people think of pray. my prayer is just like I'm speaking to you and it's every day every day anytime I um, it could be about my son it could be about me it could be about something um a sin anything i just say oh god today i spoke to somebody like this oh i shouldn't have please help me i will do the same thing again and i'm like oh god please i've done it again please forgive me and then that 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 is how i pray to my god and i put my hand there are times too that i go on my knees and pray but i've never I don't even people send me prayer lines but I've never I know that these people will be listening if it happens to go on social media some of them will be upset they tell me listen to this person listen to that person even when you are working around the house you can be listening to it there are some that have been bold enough to tell them no others out of respect because they are older than me and then I just will say okay but I don't say anything. I don't go to listen to this because if I have to, then I think I would even have time to do anything in my life. Because every day, if I open my phone this morning, people are sending me all kinds of things. And that was going to be my next question to say that Josephine, whilst you are going through all this, you manage to support other people as well. Okay. Yeah. So this is the situation. You've heard people at their very low points. Yeah. You've heard people really struggle. But yeah. still, whilst you are equally struggling, people are able to come back to you and tap from you. Yes. What's been some of the very challenging, you know, I wouldn't say experiences that people have had that you've really found it very difficult offering support? In fact, the only time I have not been able to offer support is when the parents themselves are not allowing that support. What do you mean? If sometimes, like generally, uh, maybe seeking help from professionals, going to this work these workshops, I can tell you, oh, you can go to this workshop, this, that, that, that. Others, they think, oh, we don't have time, um, we work in, but sometimes you need to make that time. And um, the decision for me to quit my job, I'm not saying everyone should quit the job, 
but the decision for me there are other ways you can go around it some people have partners you have to find a way maybe a day or two i know a parent both work but then when there are workshops they will put it in their diary one person will come and all that but it's not these decisions don't come easily that's the only time if the parent is not willing to do anything you can tell them everything and i'm thinking well it's out of my hands but for me any time somebody needs support i am there even if I don't, I'll tell you to come. I, sometimes I need to learn to say no and say, I don't have time, but that's not my nature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does have a detrimental effect on me, like as in negative impact, because I, I end up um, things that I should have done for myself. I give it up for others. Mm. It's always been my nature. It's not just for my son or what supporting is in a lot of ways. Um, it's just the parent. That's when I find it really frustrating where I feel that you could do this, but they are not doing anything about it. And to deal with your own frustrations, you've actually had moments where you've had damages to your own home yes. by your son. Yes. Tell us about it. <laughs> um, his things well that's what I've been I understand I, I, um, I've been made to understand that some of these um, children is them but the same in some may shake or that but he is constantly tapping and because he's boisterous he taps on everything and breaks you can see my TV you can see the screen this is the TV number um, nine and I put a screen protector. He's broken those TVs. Look at the hole in that wall. There, I, I give you permission to see these things. This, the sofa we're sitting in has been repaired numerous times. Currently, I've replaced his bed five times. Um, what else? Um, look, we've got no light in the living room because I had to keep changing the light. If I have to take you around the house, everything is, I'll send you certain photos. Um, at the moment, it's water bottles every day. I have to buy almost a new bottle every day. He's going for kitchen utensils, like my spoons are all bent because he bends them, hung something on it and taps around the house. I have to keep repairing damages. Um, people come in here and they're like, oh, but because I'm a handsome person, so this, I recently fixed it. Um, probably this is the fourth or fifth time it's been fixed. I put a door stop, he will stand on it and break it. Uh, we've changed door handles, lights, mirrors, everything really. What we're actually doing is to record, you know, some of the things in the house. So they are writing on the ceiling. So he actually did this record, the writing on the ceiling. And this wow. is just for probably about two months ago. It's always been painted and he would do something else. Look everywhere. See, look at my fridge. Wow. Guys. And what has he been using to... Anything. Just tap, 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 tap. Bends everywhere. He tapped till he broke this side. See, there was a covering there. All that. He's been tapping. Look everywhere. These are some of his communication. He speaks. Mm. So we didn't need to use the communication um, 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 so cards that much. Mm. Yeah, but initially I was using it, but now he's learned to speak and tell, say what he wants mm. and his understanding is coming up so well. So that's why I was saying to some of the parents that embrace the training, everything that they give you. Not everything will be for your child, but mm -hmm. there's something in there for them. Wow. Yeah. So on a typical day, if he wants to write on the ceiling... You can't stop him. He, when he will try to stop him, um, he gets upset, have a meltdown, and it's a different ball game altogether. Um, he would attack me, he would smash things, 
uh, it gets worse so I let him do what he wants and if I can clean it then I'll clean it sometimes you have to leave um, the space for him to do whatever he wants to do mm. and as long as he's safe and sure that he's safe he's, he's safe that's all I do yeah and um, let me show you let me see we put our toys in there and um, I decided, you know what, it got to a time like, let it be. I took them out. That's where he wants to decide to put his toys. So that was, that was, he will put those things there? Yes, he will stand here. I have videos of him standing, sitting here all the time. He will pick a dining chair. He's broken all the dining chairs. Um, I keep getting new set of dining chairs. He's broken them. I got this recently. He's broken it. So now I've just decided I wouldn't um, bother myself with um, the uh, so much. And see, there is a crack. I have out. Look at that writing on the walls everywhere. Look at that. Sorry, let me come out of it. Let me see. Look at the crack in there. So even so for the yeah, WC yeah, he tapped, holder. Yeah, he tap, 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 tap. So see, these are things that he will stand on here. And so I have to keep repairing things. To, he tapped to, in, to the extent that he broke all the tiles. I have to repair them. Um, wow. The damage is like... Not all of them. Some of them are sent to Ghana. Maybe what it's been replaced two or three times by insurance. Maybe Guys, maybe, maybe I am counting electrical gadgets. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And apparently there is more. And this table is broken, but it looks nice. The, oh, let me lift here. He got upset and smashed it. Um, you can see dents there. And maybe later I'll take you around the house and you see some of the damages. Most of them have been repaired, but it's just everything really. Shower head. And the bath, the sink, toilet seats, everything, everything. I, 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 my glasses, um, everything. Constantly damaging things. So, and that is where some of the challenge, that, that's the main challenge that I'm having at the moment. Aside him having this big meltdowns and him being strong, sometimes I, I don't want to say it that way, it, um, to mean it in a negative way, but sometimes when he's so upset, he attacks me. And he's so strong that it's like I'm dealing with a fully grown adult. Like I'm dealing with an adult, if I say an adult, no female, a man. How do you, or what would you say to maybe parents looking after children with special needs who may possibly think that, um, yeah, we don't want the help or we have to possibly deal with it by ourselves because that's our fate? Um, I cannot completely say that whether it's wrong or right, but I think you need help. Nobody is an island. No matter what you're the faith that you have, I believe that God brings people your way, brings um, support your way to be able to deal with all the issues that you have. I have, I've had help. I've had help. Um, so you cannot say that because of my faith. I don't believe that that's how God um, ordained things to be like. It should be always oh, my faith. I have to concentrate on God. Then we wouldn't work. We wouldn't do anything and sit down and think food will come. Why are we going out to work? Why else we think we believe that God says he will provide? Where, where was that, what, that provision coming from? 
right so i don't believe it's supposed to be that way so we need to seek help mm -hmm. from friends from professionals it could be strangers as I, i've mentioned i have asked for from the right people yes and don't let things face you that much we are human yes yeah, sometimes you feel that low you feel stress you feel like um um there is no hope but with i believe that there is hope and um, embrace the little changes even if there are no changes um, celebrate what you've got that is it that is all I can say faith you need help don't go and say I'm praying prayer yes pray but seek other help Wow people just like i said this video is not about me so don't worry about not seeing me on camera this video is about just been telling us about her story okay so if you are out there if you are a parent if you are a relative you've got a sibling or whatever you know relationship and you actually want to tell your story about you know caring for a relative a son daughter with special needs and you want us to be able to reach you please get in touch at black next gen on at gmail.com or via social media handles is the same thing at black next gen and whilst you are watching learning and being educated like the video share with somebody and subscribe to the channel can i say one thing go though? ahead i find that speaking out helps talking about it helps it helps one get things off your chest it helps educate people about your children and it helps you with your mental state as well emotional state I speak out a lot I have friends that I'll call and I'm like um, he's like this he's done this he's done that or oh, he's broken this whether you understand it or not I've just spoken about it I meet strangers and I talk about it everyone is different but I talk about him all the time it's just like having a, no, um, a neurotypical child and talking about the achievements and what they've, oh, people talk about, oh, my children, when you come home, oh, they come back from school, they are throwing things around all the time and I have to pick after them. Neurotypical children do that. So when it was wrong with talking about that, oh, my child achieved this in school, you talk about it to other people. So why is it that when we have are special children and they are special the word special is a big deal so if you understand that someone is special why don't you want to share how what do you think people are? find it difficult to talk about you know they having a child with special needs probably i uh, from our community or maybe my background as an African or Ghanaian I assess the judgment um, they are very judgmental and back home they feel that like you know when we were growing up we were not seeing a lot of these children and I saw a little bit but at that time I didn't know much but I realized that they were not being um, integrated into the community because um, there was a stigma attached to that child or the parents so people feel that oh i cannot come out i have to hide and or when you go somewhere people may say this about my child so we tend to shy away and not let people know but i think that especially in, in this day and age we should not hide these children because they have potential it's just like how like people with disabilities like um, maybe amputees and at first people used to frown on all these and then um, stereotype them but now they've seen that they are normal with the right help mm. they will thrive how does it feel you know having a child and actually asking your child to be in a special needs school oh. you know as an African mom it was a very difficult decision um, it was a very very difficult decision because I didn't know much about special needs school and I, I knew there was special needs school but to me what I knew was excuse me to use the word retard kids who were a bit retired or like in that is what 
I knew it was it wasn't correct information that I knew but that is what I'd heard so everyone thought oh the kids in those schools they behave a certain way they are like retired in, in our Khan language like Jimmy Jimmy mm. that's not true so I, I remember I um, had a discussion with a friend and says she said to me oh if she, he goes to that school they would end up copying the behavior of those children and then um, they will not improve um, a whole lot but I just sat down and I thought you know what I looked at my child I thought in mainstream at the time that he went to mainstream nursery and he struggled not him struggling but he didn't get the right support the support is not as tailored to the child as in the special school so I, I still didn't know that then but I just felt okay let's go and try so I asked the right questions I went to the meetings I asked them I said okay if I take him to the special school and I think I don't like it can I bring him back to mainstream they said sure so when you go to training and workshops and meetings and you are so involved in a child you are able to probably educate yourself enough to write, ask the right questions at the right time. So these are some of the questions that I asked. I thought, okay, why not? Let's try. So I decided to try and then see how it goes. And if it doesn't work out, I can always bring him back. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that when he went, it's, um, I cannot say whether, I, I, I think that 100, not 100, He's improved, he's, he's doing well, he's thriving there. But I, I, there's a part of me which says that there is a 10% where if he had integrated with, that's in the case of my son, that's what I believe. I may be wrong that uh, neurotypical case, maybe his speech would have improved better because he lost his speech along the line. It's coming on now, but maybe if it's been around, maybe uh, certain things, because so maybe there's a little bit of that. But I'm not sure which whether it's entirely like so. Mm. But I have seen how he has improved, how he's thriving in a special school. We should try the special school. It's more tailored to their needs, mm. right? So like, and then the class sizes are smaller, so they get more attention as to where they are in the mainstream school they might have that support but it's not as much as you get in a special school because, because the teachers are trained their um, 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 infrastructure wise everything is made for them to support them as they are so i think that parents should take that um, um how should i that opportunity to take their their children to those schools because especially back home they don't get that sometimes i sit back and i feel as much as i'm saying oh back home. but then we are here we have all these at our uh, at our disposal make use of it if it doesn't work out you can always do that come back so whilst you're talking about there are facilities around yeah, yeah. you know and let me be very blunt because this is the kind of questions that people do post out mothers who stay at home parents who stay at home are doing so out of choice because the government gives them so much money yeah and that's the reason i can see you already shaking your head on that you know but yeah that is just you know that is the kind of information out there that the government is giving you some kind of money because your child has additional needs and that's the reason why you are able to make that decision to stay at home how do you balance that information how do you balance meeting the needs of your child as against the money that is coming through there is always that there's there has always been that misconception that the government gives you everything it's not so then everyone will stay at home the whole probably the whole if you're getting everything who would work but some of us have no choice and whatever we get does not pay for everything um especially like i can put myself in those like use myself as an example whatever the government gives me 
at the end of most of the time um, I'm always in deficit yes if I tell you the damages and the things that clothing I have to buy the, um, 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 replacing things and there's so much everyone is different but there's so much that you need to you you would you need that you don't you don't get the funds for and the funds that we get um, it's not a lot at all mm. when I worked I was getting more but then at the end of the day I wasn't be I, I could not manage work and my, looking after my son at the same time sometimes you'd have to come you're then you have to come and pick him up you have so many appointments to attend so I don't know where that misconception is coming from mm. I don't know where let me end by saying in our community there's something which is called Kokonsa yeah yeah obviously growing up you would have friends yeah Living in the UK, you definitely have friends. Yes. What are some of the kokonsa that you've ever heard? And for those who are not Ghanaians, kokonsa means gossip. Yes. What are some of the kokonsa that you've heard about yourself as well as, you know, having a son with special needs? You know what? To be honest, I don't pay attention to that. I don't want to know. That is me. I know that people say it a lot. There is things and I'm well aware that it's out there. But for me, I don't want to know. I choose not to know. And those who know are not even, they will not even say. And if you come and tell me, I was like, oh yeah, it's true. I don't need to explain myself to you. The way I am, I just don't bother myself with the Konkonsa. It's Konkonsa. Konkonsa is what? Gossip. Gossip can be, I don't think gossip is true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't bother my head over that. If I if I am in that community and I want to be there, I feel and this is what I always say to you. I said, "You know, you did one concern. See, I didn't know we did one concern. Oh yeah. So we did one concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are men come be there, but you can't hear them be. So when we are talking, if you say something, then after that I'm like, yeah, 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 can't hear. So this is me. I don't, I don't really bother myself with that and it's not just from concern about you and what uh, your son it's about your relationship is it it's from concern mm -hmm. i will not explain it that is what you've heard that's me <laughs> and i think it's helped me i uh, i just can't be bothered yeah and it doesn't change my attitude towards anyone mm -hmm. N not at all i can hear if somebody speaks something even if it's negative about me my behavior doesn't change about that but i'm a bit how should i put it a bit wary mm. um, I, i'm even I, I i i feel that it's good that it's come out that this is how the person feels about me but it doesn't change my attitude towards that person i'm like okay oh okay that's how they see me oh that's oh okay why and if i need to improve i would improve mm. i sit down and do a self-evaluation about myself and my son why are they saying that but it doesn't really get to me where i get so upset where to the extent i have to isolate myself i'm not um going to places because of the challenges it's very stressful that's why probably i won't go but if i want to go i will come and if he has to be jumping on tables i'm like oh let's jump on table if i can restrain him i would if i can't jump people I think, you know, we're not going to take too much of um, Josephine's time because, yeah, it's, too, it's soon going to be getting time for um, her son to come back home. I think we've given you the opportunity to know about people who are living with children with special needs and still having a very positive, um, yeah, mindset about their own experiences as parents. If you want us to be able to find you, to be able to tell your story, reach out to us at Black Next Gen on all social media platforms. And equally, for other people who want to partner with us, we are more than willing, you know, to collaborate so that we can continue to tell the stories of us as Black people. Just think, as your final word, what would you say to the community about working or bringing up children with special needs? Yes, um, the first thing, as I said earlier on, is the acceptance. 
you accepting or acknowledging that they are special and they need more support compared to neurotypical children when you accept that then the next step is seeking more information educating yourself seeking the right information to support your child is challenging it's uh, I'll say it's very challenging I don't have the magnitude of words to explain that um, find the right support around you as in network I'll say so people that you can go to for emotional support mental support and also ensure that you are at a um, um, like as in you the parents you look after your mental and emotional um, health psychological because it does impact on you psychologically emotional mentally every it impacts on every aspect of your life so you need to um, be very resilient you have to be patient you have to accept it and then take a day at a time and also about the concursa you go through challenges every day do you want to add to it no so i think um i don't know if i've said it well but then to me for me that's the advice that i can give keep seeking for um, 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 um information educating yourself supporting your child as best as you can and i think you know your child best you know your child best that's amazing josephine thank you very much let me end by saying i saw actually a clip of you actually in darkness talking about what was going on for you and your son at what about 2 30 in the morning very very late at night early in the morning yeah and he wouldn't go to sleep yes what was going on it's a bit dark so i cannot um, show you exactly what he's doing but he's been up since 2 a.m. very excited jumping around even in the darkness and he's been up since 2 a.m. so you can imagine I've been up he hasn't even accepted oh god god we know you've had too much water no more water <laughs> I don't even know what to say. He doesn't need water. He's had something to eat, so I thought, okay, he's hungry, so eventually he ate it. He's been jumping around, head butting me, um, turned the TV on. At the moment, I've turned the main switch off so he can turn the lights on, so we don't have any lights mm. if I have to move around I have to use um, the touch on my phone or the illumination from uh, the light um, my phone and in the morning mm. we have to do about her normal daily duties sometimes when you in the, in you tell people about it they don't they can't understand or they don't know the magnitude of it he just wakes up and refuses to go back to sleep and when he refuses he wants you up as well he wants to play and you are so tired at 2 30 yes he wants to play sometimes 1 a.m. he wants to play he would come downstairs he would put on all the lights um, he would bang things on the walls make so much noise to disturb them to him he's playing so you'd have to come and ensure that he is safe and also in uh, not to disturb other uh, neighbors as well so it does happen and you saying that is not easy you are so tired you're exhausted 2 30 everyone at that time of the night oh, everyone should be sleeping snoring dreaming about things but then you are up if i sleep or i try to doze off sometimes you open my eyes and say eyes meaning i should open my eyes 
soles and another thing that as in I, physically open your my eyes. eyes sometimes what i do is that then i'll pick my phone in that frustration sometimes i just pick my phone because there's no one to talk to i can get so frustrated sometimes it just you can even that's why i'm saying that sometimes i have my down times that you are so low that you don't know what to do the people that you want to go to are sleeping no one will be up do you even if they're not or you could that people you pick up the phone you call they will be there for you but do you want to um also um um how should that yeah you don't want to disturb them yes so i tend i pick my phone so many times i pick my phone and start speaking to my phone venting out and be, like diarizing whatever i'm going through if i have to cry i cry if i have to talk to god um, well, I've to, I was told in, uh, taught in primary school, prayer is talk to God. So I'm talking to God just like that. To me, it's prayer, but I'm speaking to um, God just like I'm speaking to you and I'm saying whatever I'm feeling and then that's what I do. Sometimes I do those videos so that if somebody is challenging me or sometimes you need evidence is to the evidence is not put always to prove your point but to also educate people that's why I do that people we just like we said from the onset this is somebody's personal story we would ask that you can definitely put in your comment i wouldn't be responding to the comment i'm hoping Josephine will be able to jump on you know and be that youtube guru <laughs> i've continued <laughs> i've continued to urge her to open her youtube channel so that she can really continue to hold communities together who wants to know about you know autism who wants to know more about looking after a child with special needs but all that i would say is people let's be respectful let's be grateful and show much love and appreciation to josephine and her son and i will say if this is the first time you've joined us on this channel we talk about black experiences and that's exactly what we've done today like the video share with somebody and subscribe to help us to continue this great mission that we've put on before us thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video Boom. Thank you.